Let's go back to Mike Santoli, who is checking out the chart. Mike. Yeah, Sarah, I mean, the Wall Street Journal today presented it as a question of whether investors are getting overconfident. This little jump in margin debt that we saw. This is the orange line going back 23 years or so. Uh, you see margin debt more or less tracks the S&P 500. I mean, the equity, the equity market cap uh, of the country is the collateral for mar margin debt. Typically, it runs... Two to two and a half percent of total market cap. That's what margin debt is. So it's not out of whack right now. In fact, what's interesting is that we didn't make a new high in margin debt for this entire period of, of more than two years. If you go back here, that's May of 2018. Uh, since then, the S&P 500 is up something like 35 percent. Total margin debt from here to here is up only 7 percent. So maybe it develops into a problem. Maybe this fits in with a lot of under, other indicators of heavy speculation going on right now. But in itself, it's more of a coincident indicator and tells you that the market's been rallying and the value of people's portfolios is higher. They're willing to take on some borrowing against it. Doesn't, to me, uh, tell us that there's a particularly vulnerable condition right there in the markets. Hmm. I love when you debunk the Wall Street Journal main <laughs> stories. Whatever, what whatever it, it merits. <laughs> we should just have a daily segment. What... What, what does it tell you, though, so, so it's not so much vulnerability, what does it tell you, though, about how exposed people are to things like leveraged ETFs and other ways that they take on this debt? Yeah, that doesn't actually get measured in here. So I could point to a lot of other things, certain types of ETFs that are basically pure momentum and pure daily leverage. That stuff has looked a little bit crazy. Look at all the uh, huge volumes in call options. Those are inherently leveraged instruments. So you pay a small amount and you get exposure to a lot of upside uh, with 100% downside risk if it doesn't go above that strike price. So you have a lot of instances out there where individuals are willing to take on more risk. But to me, borrowing against your portfolio with a leverage, with a margin loan, is not right yet uh, telling you that things have uh, gone around the bend. And, and so, Mike, would this include big hedge funds that, that use leverage within their strategies or, or, or not? Yeah, it does get captured in a lot of it. I mean, not all of it, I don't think, is necessarily technically kind of New York Stock Exchange margin as they measure it. But it would uh, get you some of that. Now, hedge funds could also be using leverage of other shorts as well with futures and all the rest of it. It's difficult to, to capture, you know, that, that kind of financial exposure uh, in a snapshot form. But, yes, it, it would include some of that, although largely it's a, by the way, you don't have to use a margin loan to buy stocks. You could buy you could borrow against your uh, portfolio at a retail broker and go buy a boat uh, if you wanted to, which is not something I would advise. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.